today let us discuss the physiology of digestion i mean the process of digestive the process of digestion now what is digestion a digestion is a process where complex food substances are converted into simple food substances so th this is a complex substance these are simple substances the food we take i mean the balanced food we take includes carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals water and fiber so the balanced diet that we take in includes all these substances the carbohydrates the carbohydrates include starch all forms of starch rice roti cereal grains whichever cereal grains we are taking they are in the form of carbohydrates they are all carbohydrates which are in polysaccharides form complex form polysaccharides proteins the carbohydrates they give their daily fuel today uh, i am doing some work for the amount of work that i am doing today i require some energy so the daily energy i get from the carbohydrate sources proteins proteins are building blocks they are useful for repair of a damaged tissue in our body some some cells they die daily and they are regenerated for proteins are building blocks they are useful for growth in children they are useful for growth they are useful for repair of damaged tissue after operation after accident and a tissue is damaged so the tissue is resynthesized with the help of proteins for the formation of antibodies 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 they are useful in immune system immunity all antibodies are synthesized from proteins yeah fats they are reserve food under certain conditions they are oxidized to produce energy but basically fat is a reserve food so these three are in complex form the other things vitamins organic substances which are required in very very small quantities but they have got vital functions in body some vitamins are water soluble some are fat soluble water soluble includes b complex and vitamin c fat soluble includes a d e k vitamins minerals there are minerals which are required in large quantity some minerals are required in small quantity so macro minerals and micro minerals each mineral has got multiple functions in our body water it is medium of life it is the major constituent of plasma of blood water is the major constituent of cytoplasm so it becomes important medium of life inside the cell all digestive enzymes are hydrolases and i say hydrolases they are the enzymes which work in the presence of water and fiber and i say fiber it means when i take a plant diet substances in that plant diet which are not digested like cellulose hemicellulose lignin some substances which are not digested which are in the fibrous form so fibers they facilitate clean bowel movements regular bowel movements so that there is no constipation of course fibers also reduce cholesterol they reduce the uptake of glucose from intestine into body so it's good for diabetics 
fibrous if you take fibrous rich diet you can gradually bring down fat it is good definitely for normal bowel movement avoiding constipation but other uses of fiber is it reduces cholesterol it hinders it forms a barrier between glucose and the wall of intestine so that glucose cannot penetrate the wall so these three the first three are in complex form when when you take them they are in complex form water minerals vitamins they are absorbed as such they are already in simpler form they are absorbed directly certain vitamins certain vitamins they undergo diffusion certain vitamins are synthesized by bacteria present in colon large intestine certain bacteria gut flora synthesize certain vitamins so they are absorbed in large intestine minerals and water they are absorbed by simple diffusion so they are simply absorbed directly into the blood but these three substances carbohydrates proteins fats these are in complex form now they are not see they are, they are in complex form they are such they are so, they are so complex that diffusing through the wall of the gut becomes difficult i mean through intestine they are non diffusible as such the complex food materials are converted into simpler substances and in that form they are absorbed so conversion of complex substances into simpler substances so since these are non diffusible and these are diffusible that act that total process is called as diffusion the conversion of non diffusible complex organic substances into simple diffusible organic substances which are readily absorbed through gut wall is the process of digestion now when i say complex substances carbohydrates are in the form of polysaccharides proteins they are long chain of amino acids fats are formed by a combination of fatty acids and glycerol so they are all they are all in complex form they are to be broken into simpler form now the act of digestion includes the mechanical digestion and chemical digestion two things mechanical digestion mechanical digestion means in the mouth cavity with the help of tooth the food materials are broken down inside the stomach the muscles present inside the wall of the stomach and also inside the wall of intestine so when they contract particularly inside the stomach the muscles when they contract they cause churning movements of the food so that is called mechanical digestion even in small intestine the muscular is external inside the wall of intestine there are muscles the muscles are called muscular is external of course the smooth muscles when they are contracting movement of food peristalsis occur so when it is contracting the the food along with enzymes are also mixed so mechanical digestion is because of muscles present inside the wall mechanical digestion also occurs inside the mouth with the help of the teeth which are useful for biting the food into pieces now we will start the act of digestion inside the mouth digestion inside mouth continue just now food which is taken into mouth cavity or buccal cavity now the tooth or breaking that food into pieces now salivary gland pours saliva into mouth cavity we already saw the composition of saliva 
చాలా దూరంలో ఉన్నాను నేను ఎక్కడి నుంచి స్టార్ట్ అవుతాను నేను నా వెన్ సలైబా ఈజ్ పోర్డ్ ఇన్ టు మౌత్ సలైబా ఇట్ ఈస్ వర్కింగ్ అట్ పిహెచ్ ఆఫ్ అరౌండ్ సిక్స్ టు సెవెన్ సిక్స్ పాయింట్ ఎయిట్ దట్ ఈస్ ద పిహెచ్ ఆఫ్ సలైబ్ నా వీస్ ఆఫ్ ద కాంపోజిషన్ ఆఫ్ సలైబ్ ఇట్ కంటైన్స్ మ్యూకస్ వాటర్ సో విత్ ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ దట్ మ్యూకస్ అండ్ వాటర్ వెన్ ద టూత్ ఆర్ బైటింగ్ ద ఫుడ్ ఇన్ టు పీసెస్ the tongue is helping the mixing of food with that water and mucus to finally form food bolus now inside the saliva there is there is iga and lysozyme there is histatin lactoferrin lactoperoxidase there are so many substances which are antibacterial lysozyme lysozyme is present lysozyme present in saliva is antibacterial so it breaks down the cell wall of bacteria so it's antibacterial histatin lactoferrin lactoperoxidase all other substances are also antimicrobial substances and there is only one enzyme of course that enzyme is called salivary amylase salivary amylase it is previously called as tylin p silent so we call it as tylin it is salivary amylase all amylases acts on carbohydrates the carbohydrate that we are taking generally is starch the starch is converted into maltose so this happens at ph7 at at ph6.8 there is pancreatic amylase so pancreatic amylase is working above 7 in alkaline medium so this is working in acidic medium slightly inside mouth there is also called there is also one more enzyme called as lingual lipase but lingual lipase does not have any significant action there see all lipases will act only after emulsification of fats emulsification of fats occur after bile salts are working on the digested on the food on the food so though there is lingual lipase there is gastric lipase that work that enzymes action is of not is not of much significance so salivary glands have poured saliva into mouth cavity the tooth have bitten that food into pieces saliva has been mixed with that food particles salivary amylase present inside it is converting that polysaccharides into disaccharide remember this is a polysaccharide this is a disaccharide several units polysaccharide so it's a uh, two units combined together two units of glucose combined together it is called as maltose it can be called as salivary amylase previously called tylin it is also called alpha amylase all same so two units of glucose is maltose however 30% of starch only is digested in that and if you are taking food in a hurried fashion further less digestion occurs inside the mouth now the food mixed with the saliva uh, it contains water and mucin so it becomes a food bolus the food bolus is swallowed it enters from buccal cavity into pharynx and when we swallow it the act of swallowing is called deglutish it is called deglutish so food then enters into esophagus now digestion inside digestion in stomach
Now, the, the, after deglutition, food has come into esophagus by act of peristalsis from esophagus, food has finally come into stomach. Remember, generally no digestion occurs inside esophagus. Esophagus is simply a tube-like structure which conveys the food from pharynx to stomach. Now, food has come into stomach. The food stays inside the stomach for four to five hours. Of course, the length of the stay depends upon the amount of the food that we are taking and the type of the food that we are taking. A difficult to digest substances, they are there for a longer duration. Easy to digest, easy to digest food materials if they are taken, they are there for a smaller duration. But generally, when sumptuously when food is taken, so it is there for four to five hours inside the stomach. Now inside the stomach, mechanical digestion and chemical digestion both occurs. Mechanical digestion means inside the wall of the stomach we have got muscles. I mean the smooth muscles, involuntary muscles. It includes the longitudinal, circular and oblique muscles. They are undergoing vigorous contraction inside the wall of the stomach. Now, when, when this is undergoing contraction, so you can see some mechanical digestion occurs. But we have gastric glands. We saw the composition of gastric glands. Gastric glands present in cardiac stomach and pyloric stomach. They generally produce mucus. But the glands which are gastric glands present in the fundus and the body. So that area, the glands, they produce various enzymes. Now enzymes present in gastric juice includes pepsinogen, prorenin, and there is also hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now we, we are aware of the fact that gastric juice, the pH of gastric juice is 0.9 to 1.8. So it's anywhere between 1 and 3.5. 3 so it's highly acidic. So hydrochloric acid is present. So it kills bacteria. It kills bacteria. The major function, though we take cooked food, some quantity of bacteria are still entering along with food and water we take. So the bacteria kills. So the bacteria is killed by hydrochloric acid. Now, Two enzymes. One important enzyme is pepsinogen. It, it is an inactive enzyme. A gen at the ending or pro at the beginning indicates that enzyme is generally inactive. Most of the enzymes, when they are formed inside the cells, they are in the form of proenzymes, indicating that they are inactive as long as they are in the cell. And after they are released outside, they have their own mechanism in which that enzyme is activated. So in which that proenzymes become enzymes. Now if, they, if the proenzymes are present in enzyme state itself inside the cell, it will cause autolysis of the cell. So to prevent that from happening, generally inside the cell where they are produced, they are in the form of proenzymes. But after they are released into the cavity of gut, they are activated by their own mechanism. Pepsinogen, which is inactive, is activated with the help of hydrochloric acid, HCl. HCl activates pepsinogen. So it results in formation of pepsin, which is active. Pepsin is also formed by autocatalysis. See, for example, this is pepsinogen. Huh? This pepsinogen at the beginning. Hydrochloric acid is here. Hydrochloric acid has come and converted a part of that into pepsin. It started to act. It converted a small part of that into pepsin. Now, this pepsin will act on the remaining pepsinogen. It will act on the remaining pepsinogen. The remaining pepsinogen is converted into pepsin. So that's how you can see pepsin which is formed 
this pepsin converts remaining pepsinogen to pepsin. So this act is called as autocatalysis. So you can see HCL killing bacteria, HCL activating pepsinogen to pepsin and pepsin formed will undergo, pepsin will help, the pepsin initially formed will help the remaining pepsinogen to become pepsin so that that act is called as autocatalysis. So pepsin is formed by activity of HCL as well as by autocatalysis. Now the pepsin formed the pepsin is a proteolytic enzyme. Now, if I observe the proteins, proteins now, now when I see, when I see at the time of digestion of proteins. I told you complex substances are broken down into simple substances. Now, proteins are broken down into proteoses, broken into peptones. Polypeptides tripeptides, dipeptides and amino acids. See, sequential process of digestion in proteins. The larger protein are broken into proteoses. Proteoses are small than proteins. The proteoses are broken down into peptones. That means peptones are further smaller than proteoses. Peptones are broken down into polypeptides, a chain of amino acids. It, it is further broken down into tripeptides, tripeptides where there are only three amino acids. And broken down into two, so dipeptides includes only two amino acids. And finally broken down into amino acids. We know protein is a chain of amino acids. So it is a chain of amino acids like that. Protein is a huge chain of amino acids. See these are individual amino acids. When I say dipeptide two of them are combined like that. When I say tripeptide three of them are combined like that. More, many of them are combined polypeptide. So, Peptones are much bigger than polypeptides and proteoses are bigger than peptides. Proteoses are bigger than peptones and ultimately the larger one is called proteins. Now during the act of digestion, you can see a sequential breakdown of proteins to amino acids. Now the pepsin, the activated pepsin acts on the first one, the proteins and converts that into proteoses and peptones. So this area, proteins are converted into proteoses, proteoses are converted into peptones. So this total process occurs with the help of pepsin inside the stomach. Now there is another enzyme inside the stomach. The enzyme is called as prorenin. It's an inactive enzyme. Pro at the beginning indicates that that enzyme is inactive on synthesis. It's an enzyme present in infants. Now HCL activates that to renin. Hydrochloric acid converts pro-renin to renin. This renin then this 
the renin comes and acts on casein. Casein is a milk protein in infants, in the suckling infants who are taking in milk. The milk contains casein, a protein called casein. So renin acts on casein in presence of calcium ions. So in presence of calcium ions, it is converted into calcium paracasinate. It is converted into calcium paracasinate. Now the pepsin comes, the same pepsin comes and acts on this. So that means it is still a protein. So pepsin comes and acts on that. Acts on calcium paracasinate to form peptones. So now this, this is what is happening inside the stomach. Now inside the stomach, the food is staying for 4 to 5 hours. Mechanical and chemical digestion occurs inside the stomach. Mechanical digestion occurs by the churning action of smooth muscles present inside the wall of the stomach. When food enters into the wall of the stomach, gastric gland produces gastric juice. Gastric juice is highly acidic. So its pH is around 0.9 to 1.8. Under highly acidic conditions, pepsin and renin are working on proteins. So these are the enzymes which work in acidic medium. When you go to small intestine, the enzymes present in pancreatic juice and intestinal juice, they are working under alkaline medium. Alkaline medium is a medium ab above the pH 7. So here conditions are different, their conditions are different. A condition is that there is hydrochloric acid, so there is a highly acidic medium inside the stomach. Now, inside the wall of the stomach, I told you there is a layer of mucus, which is 2 mm in thickness, which forms a barrier between the acid present inside the cavity and the wall of the stomach. And of course, there are also bicarbonates. Now, by certain cells inside the wall of the stomachs are producing bicarbonates. That bicarbonates will neutralize the acid that is produced inside the stomach. The main function of hydrochloric acid is it kills the microbes. The function of HCl is to activate pepsin and activate renin. Two enzymes are activated with the help of HCl. Pepsinogen activated to pepsin with the help of hydrochloric acid. Pepsin is also formed by autocatalysis. Now that pepsin acts on proteins and converts that into proteins and peptones. HCl also activates pro-renin to renin. Pro-renin is inactive and renin is active. Pro-renin is inactive. Renin is active. Now HCl activates pepsinogen to pepsin. HCl also activates pro-renin to renin. That's the function of HCl. Now after pepsin is formed by activation of pepsinogen by HCl, that pepsin, pepsin is also formed by autocatalysis. Now that pepsin acts on proteins and converts proteins into peptones and proteoses. HCl also comes and converts pro-renin to renin. Renin is an enzyme which is active in infants. Now in infants they are taking in milk as a medium of nutrition. To digest that milk. Now in milk there is casein, milk protein. Renin works on that in presence of calcium and converts that into calcium paracasinate. After calcium paracasinate is formed, pepsin comes and acts on that and, and calcium paracasinate is also converted into peptones. Now partial digestion has occurred inside the wall of the stomach, inside the cavity of the stomach. Now partially digested acidic food that is formed inside the stomach is called as chyme. It is called chyme. It's called chyme. Now the chyme which is formed will gradually enter into small intestine. Of course there is pyloric sphincter there. Spyloric sphincter regulates 
small quantities of food do enter into small intestine. Further digestion occurs inside small intestine.